Crusaders! Today I'm here to do my belated December Reads video. I had a bit of a mixed reading month in December, um, so I think I'm just going to go straight into it. So the first book that I finished in December was actually one that I started reading in July. I was really enjoying it and I just stopped reading it for some reason and I decided that I wanted to finish it before the year was out and that was A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. Uh, like I said, really enjoying it. I think it was just that it was on my Kindle and I'm never as excited to read books that are on my Kindle and other books came along and I just forgot about it. So yeah, very happy to have finished that before 2014 was out. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. I thought, okay, it was a really great continuation of the story. Perhaps not as much happened in this one I think it's a very political one and I really enjoyed the political aspects but I think what knocked down a star for me was that I just wasn't happy with the battle scene I just thought it was boring I don't know maybe I expected more from the battle scenes than I got I just found them a bit hard to get through um yeah but still I am going to continue on with the storm of swords sometime in the near future I do want to finish this series but I am not pushing myself for any time limits at all. The second book that I finished in December was Two on a Tower by Thomas Hardy. I also gave this one four stars. I did a review on this book so I'll link it here. I won't say too much about it. What I will say though is that it is a tragic romance set in the 1800s. It's by Thomas Hardy. Can't really go wrong in my opinion with Thomas Hardy and I thought this one was done very well. The book I read after that was The Flood by David Main and this one didn't go down with me as well as Two on a Tower has done. I also reviewed this in the same review as Two on a Tower, so that is of course linked right now. I'll set it to the place, possibly, maybe, maybe not. Um, this is a retelling of Noah's Ark and it has some original points and some good points to add to the story but overall I just didn't feel that it added any mu anything much new to the story of Noah's Ark and I did have some problems with it that I do go into in the review to do with women and to do with description not a lot of setting description but I just wanted more I wanted more I didn't fall into a slump after those I think I had a good start to the month but after that I really just don't feel like I read anything for the rest of the month even though I've got books left to show you um but so I decided to so I just wasn't reading for a few days I decided to pick up the fourth book in the Night Runners series Shadows Return by Lynn Flewelling this is me this is the Night Runners of course I'm going to love it it can do nothing wrong in my eyes and I don't really care whether I'm being critical or not when I'm reading this I really thought this was a strong one, obviously I gave it 5 stars, um, I thought this was a really fast paced one, I got through this one really quickly, I liked the situation they were in, I liked that it was dealing with slavery in some ways, it was, it was dealing more with the relationship and it was just fantastic. Oh, Alec, so cool. I didn't think that the Night Runners could surprise me or shock me anymore but it really can, that ending makes me want to read The White Road so badly and this book also makes me want to pick up another book that has alchemy in it. So as I was reading those books I was also reading this short story collection edited by Stephanie Perkins along with it. Um, this is of course My True Love Gave To Me, you've probably seen this absolutely everywhere with its hot pink pages and its lovely ribbon bookmark. I did enjoy this as you guys know, I don't read a lot of young adult, don't read a lot of romance, but for the Christmas period I felt like a nice collection of young adult romances would be lovely to read alongside everything else. And it was indeed lovely to read, and I had nice times reading a story before bed. However, as with any collection, there are some stories I liked more than others, and I'm liking what people are doing where they just quickly say what rating they gave to each book because overall I gave this book three stars although I think my average was more on the 4.5 scale let me just look quickly Midnight's by Rainbow Rowell 
I gave that one four stars. The Lady and the Fox by Kelly Link, three stars. I think I enjoyed that one more than other people did though. Angels in the Snow by Matt De La Pena, five stars. Really loved that one. Polaris is Where You'll Find Me by Jenny Hahn, two stars. I don't understand what other people see in it. It's a Yuletide Miracle Charlie Brown by Stephanie Perkins, five stars. Your Temporary Santa by David Leatherson, three stars. Crumple Slough by Holly Black, four stars. What the Hell Have You Done, Sophie Roth by Gail Foreman, five stars. Really, really loved that one. Want to read another Gail Foreman book because of that short story collection, which is good because it's what I bought this for, just to see if there were any young adult contemporary authors I quite fancied reading. Beer Buckets and Baby Jesus by Myra McIntyre, three stars. Welcome to Christmas California by Kirsten White, five stars and my favourite story of the collection. Star of Bethlehem by Ali Carter, um, four stars, 4.5 and The Girl Who Woke the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, three stars, very confusing, maybe 2.5. Overall I recommend this as a nice easy holiday Christmas read but not something to rush out and buy if it's not Christmas. So I was really kind of slumpy after that. I didn't really know what to read. I kind of wanted to wait for the book that I was getting for Christmas because nothing else was really, like I wasn't really feeling anything else. Um, but the shed leaked and I went in to save some of my old childhood books before they got wet and I found this in there and I just read it because it's just it's beautiful. This is The Wind in the Willows Treasury from the original stories by Kenneth Graham illustrated by Ernest H. Shepherd, which is the main part of why I read it. Um, this is not, as this is a treasury, this is not the whole of The Wind in the Willows but this is the collection I had when I was a child and it is so gorgeous and I am so glad that I read this. I did not give this a rating on Goodreads because I didn't feel I could give it a rating. It is what it is. This is the Dean edition. It was published in 2000 and it is a very scarce print I found out. Not a lot of people have this edition and the, this obviously this was just the edition I had as a child and thought nothing about so I'm gonna take good care of it now. I'm glad that it didn't get ruined. Obviously I see no problem with reading and adoring beautiful children's books. So there's really lovely illustrations in here. Obviously it doesn't take very long to read, but it's like a little revisit of everything that felt so good in childhood. And I am just, just really happy to have reread it. And it makes me want to read The Entire Wind in the Willow, The Entire Wind in the Willows. So maybe that is something that we'll look into getting sometime. But yes, a very beautiful edition and a very nice read. So that took me up to Christmas. I got my Christmas books and the first one I read from the Christmas book haul that I made was Jay by Howard Jacobson. And this is because it really intrigued me. I wasn't really sure what it was about. So I thought, if this is intriguing me right now, let's just read it. This book takes place in the future after this event has happened and they call it What Happened If It Happened. And people don't talk about it and people don't know. So it's very mysterious in that respect. There are two main characters in this who are in love and it's about them and it's about what happened and it's just about this whole feel of the world. It's very subtle, it's a dystopian, but it's a very subtle dystopian. Books aren't banned, they're just unavailable. The state isn't talked about a lot and it kind of lets you make your own decisions about what you think is going on and what you think happened. And towards the end you get the feeling, you get the message, you know what has happened and it really makes you reflect on the right now. And oh, it, it really got into my head. I don't read dystopians, so this was a great one for me to start with because it really took me out of my comfort zone and what I liked about it was the fact that although it was dystopian it wasn't completely different, it wasn't like worlds apart, it was very much our world just after this something happened that could very easily happen. 
So that was what I read in December, not the best for me, not the worst, kind of, eh, you know, um, but January has gone off to a great start and I feel very confident about my reading in January. So obviously I did not read my TBR piggy pick for December, which was Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. That was mainly because of the kind of slump I was in. So I'm going to just put that to one side and pick out another TBR piggy for January. And let's dig down. Oh, okay, and the winner is New Selected Poems by Paul Muldoon. Ooh. Poems. Well, that's that's nice to add to my um, TBR for the month, isn't it? To read some poetry. So yes, this is Paul Muldoon's New Selected Poems. I had to buy this for university, so it's probably best that I'm reading it in advance. So yes, okay, great. So that was it for me for December. Comment below if you have read any of the books that I have and want to talk about them and um, comment below with a name for my TBR piggy. I feel like he, she, it needs a name and yeah, the best name will you name the piggy. So thank you again and I'll see you soon. Bye!